So, real quick before the video starts, if you guys enjoy it, remember to leave a like, and if you want to see more like it, remember to subscribe. Anyway, today we're back on Miner's Haven, and I'm actually recording a video for once. Kind of crazy, I know. I've uh, I've just kind of lost my motivation. I, I explained it in the last video I uploaded, which was a little while ago. Hopefully I get it back soon. Hopefully I get it back to start working on videos again, but you know. It just kind of comes and goes sometimes, so I'm not going to try and push myself to force out videos when I don't want to. I'll just go when I want to. Right now I feel like it. Today we're going to be covering the new update that came out in Miner's Haven. We finally got an update and there's a couple nice little changes in here. Some quality of life stuff to talk about. Some new items that I'll be reviewing in this video. And before I actually get into talking about the new features, I do want to mention the obvious thing that is on everyone's mind. The fact that Miner's Haven is completely broken and scuffed right now. And everybody is aware of this, including the devs. Foxy and Talon are both aware of what's going on and uh, talking about the issues and telling them and trying to yell at them to fix it won't do anything. Anything. I know it's frustrating and stuff being broken isn't fun. I don't like it either, but they're working on it. They're trying to get it fixed. There's nothing I can do about it, so we all know it's broken. It's broken. That's how it is. It'll get fixed eventually, so we just got to deal with it for now. But that being said, because I know there are going to be people who comment about that, let's start talking about the update. First, I'll go through all of the new features and this list of stuff here. Just going through all these little changes. First of all, birthday event has been prolonged. It's actually going on a little bit longer for a couple days extra. That means birthday boxes are still obtainable. All of the birthday exotics are still around and all that good stuff. So that's pretty nice. The Daily Reborn Shop now has 10 items rather than 8 in it, meaning that there are more items for sale every day. This is helpful for lower life players, but for highlight players like me, doesn't really matter. I guess it's a good quality of life change though, nothing too negative with that. The Craftsman UI slightly updated, also quality of life nice stuff. King Queen birthday cakes are now soulbound, so if you sacrifice then you'll keep them, and they're still obtainable, they're gonna stay obtainable for a little while, even after the birthday update ends, so having them be soulbound is quite nice, because while they're obtainable, they're also sacrifice proof now, which is very, very good. Maybe I'll try and go for them on my orange slot in MH from the beginning, and I'll actually record for that series again, because it's been a while. Changes to the nighttime lighting and how Roblox textures look. So, as you can see, nighttime got changed. It's very dark. When you place down certain items, they are... A little bit brighter now, they'll stand out a bit more. That was a pretty bad example to pick. Yeah, items just have a slightly different look to them at night. I think they glow a little bit more, or they stand out a little bit more due to the lighting. You know, it's just a little bit darker, so they stand out more, I think. I personally don't really like the new lighting too much. I think it's a little bit too dark. It reminds me of some of the, the older lighting back in, like, 2017 or 2018 Miner's Haven. Moving on, though, the Hourglass got a buff. Its base multiplier is now 90 times, which makes it a slightly more usable item. I still don't think it's worth it in setups. It's still got a pretty low MPU, at least at the base line, so I don't think it's great, but it is still a really useful item, and this buff makes it just a little bit better and a little bit more worth going for. Now, while the birthday event is still going on, all the birthday and pizza-themed items aren't in the UC shop anymore. Birthday boxes are still around, they're still obtainable, you can still get these items pretty easily, but they're not in the UC shop anymore. Not a big deal for all the smart people who didn't waste all their UC on them anyway, like me. Avium now has Frostbite immunity, another small buff just making it ever so slightly better. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised to see people starting to switch to this thing a little bit more. I personally haven't, and I don't think it's it's worth using still, but wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing some people using it. I don't think it's worth it still, though. The ore tracker got changed. It only works with base owners now, which is a pretty nice change. It's just a small optimization. Makes the game run slightly better. Anything that makes the game perform better, especially right now, is very welcome. The death cap can take away frostbite. Just a small little buff. Kind of helpful, I guess, in certain situations. Doesn't really matter. Big Alberto can't be used twice anymore. I didn't know it could be used twice. I, I guess that's just a slight nerf to it or slight change to the item. Not really a big deal. I don't think many people use the Big Alberto anyway, so so it doesn't really matter. The Goo Lagoon actually applies the wet effect now. I believe it was supposed to, but it only, uh, it gave fireproof instead of wet, and now it properly gives wet, which I guess is a nice little change. I don't think many people actually used the item or cared about the effect, but it got fixed, so if you did use it, I guess, uh, you're good. You got it. It's fixed now. Juice, yes. Luxury chances across every single box got nerfed so that you can't get luxury items as easily. This is nice because it makes the luxury box a little bit more valuable. It means you're not going to be getting spammed with luxury items in every single box that you open. They were a lot, they were way too common before. They were way too common, so it's nice to see them get nerfed in chances a little bit. Again, not a huge change, but it's just a nice small little quality of life thing. Anti-Grav is uh, updated on the client now. I'm assuming it makes it a little bit better, a little bit more viable to use. Still not good. Anti-Grav sucks in most cases, but I guess it's a small optimization, so if you use anti-graph for some weird reason, then it's a little bit better now. Also, 
Gang Gang. The remote octagonium mine got changed to the pulsar octagonium mine to more properly reflect, reflect what it actually does. I can talk good. The item got reworked to be a pulsar item a while ago, and it kept the remote name, but it finally got changed to pulsar. It got a size change. It's a lot smaller now. It actually pulses. Looks a lot more like a pulsar item than it used to, which I guess is nice. Modernized leaderboard system. More efficiently loads stats. That's a pretty nice change. This makes the leaderboard display, I assume, more accurately, a little bit better. And also another leaderboard change, which I'll show in a second, which will we'll get to, but tone down the radius of the Midas Blaster explosions. This is just a nice little change, nice little quality of life thing. Especially for people like me who use the Midas Blaster in setups, it makes it, it makes it just a tiny little bit better. And also, fix the number of quirks with placement. Now, they say that they fix some placement bugs, but there is still currently a placement bug where if you place down an item and then withdraw it, you can't place it down again. Slightly annoying for building setups and doing stuff. That's all the stuff listed in the change log, though. There is one other change with the leaderboards that I'm going to show, and it was only effective for one leaderboard. Also, most skip today is broken right now, which is uh, just great. You'll love to see it. But the highest life leaderboard also got a change. It now goes up to top 100 players. Now we can see the top 100 ranked high life players in the game, and it goes down to 100. And of life 144,000. And the fact that the top 100 players are all well above life 100,000 is absurd to me. I think that's crazy. Like, the top 25 players are all, I believe, above 200k right now, and the top 100 are all above 100k, which is just wild. Anyway, though, there's all of the changes in the change log. Let's talk about all of the new items now. First of all, worth mentioning, the portable tractor beam got a slight remodel. It's a lot smaller now. I think it got indirectly buffed from it, but it's just a little bit different now. Nothing crazy, but worth mentioning. Also, obviously, three different catalysts for all of the superstitious items. There is one regular reborn item, which is actually a decimal rarity, called the Soul Blossom added. This thing is a portable upgrader. It kind of is a furnace, but it's got a zero multiplier. And instead of doing a multiplier, it has the Wild Spore effect. It, uh, it'll take away negative status effects from ores, but it doesn't give any multiplier. It's a rarity 0.4 light 4,000 item. I already have two of them. I know people are trying to get it, so easy flex. And in my opinion, not a very good item. I guess it's okay early on, I guess, but there, there's plenty of stuff that serves its purpose just as well, if not better. Next up, we've got two advanced evolutions. We've got the Devil Spore and the, uh, the Castle Bravo, which is an interesting name. I believe it's named after a bomb. So we got these two items here. The Castle Bravo has two different multipliers. The top beam is a 75 times multiplier. The bottom beam is a 40 times. The bottom beam is pretty garbage, but the top beam is actually pretty good. A 75 times multiplier is really, really good, especially for this being a 6 long upgrader. It's actually got pretty solid MPU, and it's not a bad item at all. It's very wide, but that's the only real downside. This thing is certainly not bad. And then you've got the Devil Spore. This thing is a, another 6 long. It's got a 22 multiplier, and I believe it carries the same effects of the regular Vampire Spore. I also would like to check if it has a special effect with the Dreamer's Blight, because I know it buffs up Spore items. It buffs up the regular Spore, so I don't actually know if it buffs this thing up, so let's find out. Hey, it does. It actually does. It makes it a little bit better. Not huge, but it gives it a 26 times multiplier, which is pretty nice. Not a great item, not super good MPU, but at lower lives, it can be pretty good. And my game just completely froze there for a second. Oh, that's good. My game is just dying. You'll love to see it. Anyway, there's three new superstitious items as well, which we'll talk about, starting off with the, uh, the meth mask. This item is a portable, as you can see based on the, uh, the area around it. This thing is a 140 times multiplier. Considering it's a portable, that is very, very strong. It is really good for being a portable, and its only real downside is it basically just applies random negative status effects to ores. It can give them anti-grab, which makes them just fly up into the air endlessly, which can be a pretty genuinely bad downside, but it happens rarely rarely enough that it's still pretty good. This thing is just a really strong item. The only real downside of it, in my opinion, obviously the anti-grav, and then also finding a place for it in your setup, because it's a big item with a relatively small radius around it. That being said, though, it's a god-tier item. You should definitely go for it. It's really good. We got the Swag City. This thing is a... a, a, a but yeah, it's a, this is an interesting item. In my opinion, I don't think it actually looks very good. It, it honestly just looks like an MH Plus item to me. This looks like an MH Plus Advanced Reborn. I'm not a big fan of the aesthetics of it. That's why it's on the weaker end of the new superstitious items added, but it's still really good. In the daytime, it can do a, up to a 90 times multiplier, and it has three different upgrader beams all underneath the lights. If you have centered ores, it's going to hit all three of them just fine. Each one of them in the day, though, does a 4.5 times multiplier, and then during the nighttime, they each do a 5.7 multiplier, which results in a 185 times multiplier. Obviously, a lot better during the nighttime. If you play in a solo island, then it'll be a lot better if it's permanently nighttime, but it's just a pretty good superstitious still. Personal distaste for the aesthetics aside, it is quite good. And finally, we got the Merlin Circe... 
And finally, we've got the Merlin Sorcery. God, I can talk really well today. This thing, in my opinion, looks really cool. I actually quite like the aesthetics of this one in contrast to the, the Swag City. I forgot the name of it. God, I'm just great at this. And this thing, it has a centered upgrader beam, and it's basically just this big uh, beam of light there. And this thing will do a random multiplier, I believe, from around 100 to 150 times. For my testing, it seems to just kind of range in that area. It's just anywhere in between that, pretty much. It's, uh, it's just a random multiplier. Might have more effects, it might need more testing, but as of right now, this thing is still a really good item. It's a 7 long, and it has a, a pretty good multiplier. Obviously, the randomness isn't great, but that's that's pretty easy to uh, to make up for, considering the randomness isn't that bad, and it's all a pretty good multiplier. You have a good chance of getting something solid, and uh, yeah, it's good. Might have more effects, like I said, so if it does get... If we do learn more about it, then I'll update in the comments below, and I'll make sure you guys know what changed with it, or what it actually does. But yeah, even not accounting for that, it's just just a really good item. And yeah, there's all of the, uh, the new stuff in this update. All of the stuff, all of the new items, the new changes in it. You know, I actually think it's a pretty good update. I'm actually, I've actually enjoyed it quite a bit, other than the entirety of Miner's Haven just being completely broken and screwed right now. But yeah, ignoring that part of it, it's actually a pretty fun update. It's got some really nice superstitious items, all the stuff in it is pretty solid, and it's just a good update. And maybe one day Talon will learn what the problem is and actually get the game fixed, and things will be back to normal, and people will look at this and go, hey, this was just a solid little quality of life update and not have any problems. Until then, though, the community will still hate everyone and everything having to do with Miner's Haven. With that being said, though, I'm gonna head out. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Description has a bunch of cool stuff. Discord server, Twitter, all that cool jazz. Go check it out if you're interested. Subscribe, like, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna head out. Peace out, everyone. I don't like that. God damn it, now I messed this up too. Ugh. Damn it. Damn it! Nope. Nope. I do the first time. God. Fuck it. There we go.